we recording? Ooh, get in the zone. Get in the zone. Feel it? Feel it? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is more... I, I gotta get into the pooping zone by accident. <laughs> is that the zone you went into? <laughs> I gotta get into the throwing up zone just uh, just real briefly. Uh. Welcome welcome to the Rage Like Podcast where we'll poop or throw up. It's just my podcast, man. I'll do whatever. Do you need to throw up? Do you want to get the bucket? Or? No. No? None of that. Can you move that microphone a little closer to your this face? This is gross. It's I don't think I want to anymore now. I know what happens at these things. <laughs> it's disgusting. Yep. Welcome, everybody, to the podcast. Uh, I'm Jeff, as always. I'm Grant. It's Grant. Grant, you're back again. Uh, I'm back. It's It's been a little while since you were on, I think. It's been about uh, three or four weeks. Uh, something like that. Uh, I'm usually like once a month or so, once uh, every other month. Try to keep rotating. Try yeah. to keep the, the keep talent it fresh. fresh. Yeah, exactly. Give people time to cool down and get ready for the podcast. Keep it funky. Keep it fresh. I need other people to have life experiences before they come back on the podcast. I, because I rarely have those. So I, I, have, need a, I need a good chunk of time. I have none. I have yeah. zero life experiences anymore. I just sleep inside of... Uh, my dark souls. That's, that's what you have me here for, though. That's exactly. So, but actually, we had we had one life experience this week. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, okay, I did have one. It was yes. we both had the same life experience. Yeah, you had it twice. <laughs> I'm, t- <laughs> I'm not once, <laughs> but I'm twice a loser. Two times. A, oh, that's just that's sorry. That's a good joke, but it's really <laughs> mean. <laughs> Why okay. am I crying? You should uh, next year. You should just uh, you should record one episode. Of one podcast that can go into every category for the podcast awards. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, way, shit. Uh, we will make you a trophy and it'll be like, I lost every award this month. Or maybe I should just submit Rage Select next year under a completely fucked up category. Yeah. I don't think they listen to them, right? So it'd be like, all right, Rage We Select. won education. Yeah, put us in under uh, garden and agriculture because <laughs> I think we can take Martha Stewart. Uh, does Martha Stewart have a podcast? I don't know, but if she did, she'd crush us. Is that okay? I just kind of want to listen to her read the dictionary every night to go to bed. Right? Uh, just, no? Is that what is that floats w- your boat? No, I mean, like, not before I go to bed, but while I'm going to bed. I'm not I'm not looking for hot Martha Stewart. Okay, that's going not to... Not trying to that's a rub really, one out on your Martha Stewart sheets. Yeah, huh? I'm not into potpourri that much. <laughs> that's just, you know, fuck, man. I mean, she's a handsome lady, right? But, uh, yeah, you know... She's like 73. She's no Helen and, Mirren, and but she, uh, you know, I wouldn't... Uh, Okay, never mind. We're we're gonna go. We're, no, anyway. no, no. We're gonna have sex with Martha Stewart. It's happening. I now. mean, I know she's a big fan of the podcast. <laughs> I know she listens every single week. So. She's like, man, shit. I didn't know they felt the same way about me that I felt <laughs> about them. Right. <laughs> It's a love story for the ages. Right Jeff now from she's taking like some nice papaya extract and right. uh, eucalyptus uh, and making a nice yeah. lube, sex I'm gonna, lube I'm gonna, that I'm we gonna, can use. I'm going to get a couriered gift basket next week that's all kinds of weird homemade sex toys from Martha Stewart. Did you know that you could make your own dildo out of a pine cone? <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Martha Stewart. Anyway. That sounds painful. Um, yeah, we, we met up last week, last night, for the to watch the podcast awards. One, I mean, I was watching it on John Rubio's phone, but it seemed like, I mean, I hate award shows, like, yeah. from top to bottom. This one seemed, like, worse than that, right? Like, uh, is Chris Jericho and Budget, uh, 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 I don't remember what her name is. I, she has a big podcast. He has, a, I guess, a big podcast. Yeah. Um, it was supposed to be Dennis Miller and that lady hosting, and I guess he bailed. Dennis Leary? Dennis Miller. Dennis Miller? Dennis Miller. Remember Dennis, Dennis Miller live? Conservative. Yeah, like, that guy. Super weird conservative Dennis Miller. He was supposed to be the host. I guess Is he, he, I, I guess I he also has a podcast. I haven't seen him say anything funny in a long time. Like, he's just, he's all about Tea I don't Party mean to go on a rant here. Obama's a, but... from Kenya <laughs> and, like, the government. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he kind of went a little bit off the deep end. I want to, you know what? I want to see Dennis Miller go on last week tonight with John Oliver and just... I want to see John Oliver just kind of make a fool out of him. Right? Yeah, just <laughs> just destroy him. So, it, I mean, okay, the Daily Show is going off the air, right? Mm-hmm. Last week tonight is basically the well, new Daily, Daily Show. Well, Daily Show's not going off the air. Oh, uh, well, John Stewart is... being Stewart's... taken over by Trevor Noah. Okay, but isn't last week tonight kind of just the new Daily Show? It is pretty much the the heir to the throne in, in as far as, like, how... Well, it encompasses the spirit and then takes and has evolved it. And I think it does it on a much better level. Yeah. I mean, it's 30 minutes commercial free where they can dedicate to a topic, still make it as funny. They don't feel beholden to to having these uh, 
what do you call it? Correspondence they have to jump to every so often. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or having to have the formula where they interview someone. I don't like that as much anymore. I just want to see yeah, the I've, first two segments of mm-hmm. John Stewart. Yep, that's. And that's if he's what? not in the second one, it's someone else, a correspondent. I turn it off. Boop. Yep, exactly. I actually think it's funny because I told you this a while back. I feel like last week tonight with John Oliver is essentially the show from the newsroom. Except that it's like for real, and it's not yeah. just a bunch of ginned up Aaron Sorkin bullshit. I'm just like, but I think they make uh, very newsroom poignant points. Yeah, because uh, he's points. also able to interject his humor into there. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so last week we're watching the podcast. Or t- last, last night, last night we're watching the podcast awards. Spoiler alert! Yeah, we lost. <laughs> it's gonna be like five days after that for us. Yeah, but I did want to say before uh, before. We we talk about that. Um, I did. Want, I would like to say thank you to all the Rachel like fans who got us nominated. Right, so much. You guys and like, for voting for us for once voting. we were nom- nominated. Absolutely. Like yeah. and uh, you know, shame on you because we didn't. You didn't vote enough. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we didn't win. No, that's fine. We, we lost to the instance. No, yeah, I don't even know who that is. Uh, yeah, I don't. I rarely listen to any other gaming podcasts anymore. I'm listening to. I, I guess they're they're in some alliance though with Brushwood's crew, the Diamond Club stuff. Yeah, and then Brian did win. Uh, Brian won two awards. He uh, apparently he went there and yeah. he went and accepted them. Yep, I didn't know he was out there. Yep, but uh, this is the first year. I mean, you guys uh, last two years have won, right? For, For Beerist? the Beerist, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the first year going up against Alton Brown, and we lost to Alton Brown. <laughs> is this the first year that he had a podcast, or is it the first year that he submitted it to the podcast awards? Uh, I'm, I don't think he would have necessarily submitted it, but okay. um, first time he was in it. Okay. First time I've seen him as a nominee. Is I'm it, not sure how long he's been doing it. I think it's kind of bullshit that they don't break food and drink into separate categories because like, you guys have a very specialized podcast, and it's like Alton Brown. I'm sure he's just talking about food science all the time and shit. Yeah. You know? I mean, when we kind of saw – well, we thought last – we thought every single year we didn't have a chance for uh, the Bears. Yeah. And the first year we won, we beat out Splendid Table, which is an NPR podcast, which is pretty popular. Damn right. And we we're like, wow. And the second year, we were like, okay, there's absolutely no chance we're going to win it. Yeah. Because we we're up against not only Splendid Table that year, mm. but also uh, Doug Benson's podcast, uh, Doug and Karen Eat Food or something like that. I think okay. That's what it's called. And we we're like, okay, name. well, that's like Sorry, an Earwolf Dan. one. And uh, as part of the Earwolf Network, and there's an NPR one. We've lost. Right. There's no way. Right. Somehow we fucking did it. And so I think maybe <laughs> there's a little bit of, of hope yeah. this year that I never had the previous two years. So it <laughs> actually, I actually kind of went, <laughs> oh, we didn't this year. So I mean, you're saying the podcast award foundation, they like spent two years building you grant up <laughs> just so they could like, it's just a bunch of old podcasts. They got me. They, they prayed me those fuckers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this time it was against Alton Brown and we were, we were still kind of like, I don't think so. But there's a, in the back of my mind, I was like, maybe we, we pulled it off the last two. Yeah. I yeah. see. I was, we, I was just strange as to me, it was odd to me, and I don't like. Maybe I need to go look because I'm sure the instance. I'm you know I don't know who they are. That doesn't mean that just because I don't know who they are that they aren't like some you know huge thing with a bunch of followers. But like the giant bomb cast and like Rooster Teeth podcast, the and patch, the, right? you know, the patch, right, and the super best friends cast. Like these and it's are a video game. I mean, those are heavy. Those are hardy hitters, yeah. right? And like the giant bomb cast, those guys have been doing that since like back when they worked for GameStop. They were doing. You know what? Like it could have been uh, Brushwood. They could have the 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 mighty Brushwood swing. We should have gotten in there before this instance crew. Yeah, but uh, yeah, next year, whatever. I mean, they, they, like they were they must have been on top of their shit. Yeah, did, uh, did I mean you know did we they, were surprised to even get nominated. You, you've already won two awards. Did you? I mean, like, did your your testicles grow two sizes that day? Was it like the Grinch? Or and something? they shrunk when thrice. Oh, yesterday good. Well, when it's we good lost. that you won two, so that they're they're just down to like one X now, right? I can I can do speed walking again. Okay, I'm, I'm glad. You don't, you don't have to wear those pants anymore. <laughs> yeah, you can go back to regular pants. I have to have the wheelbarrow in front of me. Um, but yeah, it was it was kind of a kick just to see. I mean, just to see Rage Select's name on a list with you know those other things. Like it's it's cool, thing yeah, for the podcast award. So maybe and next year, you know, a, even being a nominee is is press. In itself, are you saying it's an honor just to be nominated? Is that what you're saying? It is an honor. (laughs) You Um, you were recognized among a a prestigious crew. I wonder though. I I have to start to wonder now though. um, Like they had to have sent emails out to the people who won to tell them that they were going to be the winners, right? I maybe I guess. I don't know. 
I, I don't know, I don't how, know. how we we won last year and the Beerus, and we didn't get an invite. Any, uh, okay. Anything. We got the first year. I liked it. I thought it was the first funny. year. They totally flew one of us out. Uh, that we were at this bar. We were watching it. There's like two or three bullshit categories. Then food and drink came on, and that was decided. Then gaming came on, that was decided. And like about 30 seconds after that, everybody turned their phones off, and it was like, we're not watching any more of this horse shit. Yeah, we're right. done. We're just getting wasted. Right. And Drowning so, our sorrows. Well, John Ramirez told me at one point that they were just up there doing ads for pop, and like they were doing the audible.com ad yeah. with Chris <laughs> Jericho and what's her face on stage, right? Like it was like, Jesus, I'm. I. <laughs> We should really figure out what yet, what's her face's name. Was. We really I feel should. bad, uh, but oh well. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't feel that bad. She looks like Julia Louis Dreyfus, like a bunch of I years wish. ago or something like that. But, uh, um, but I, you want to hear something really funny, Grant? I do. So today I was rolling through my emails looking for the questions for the question part of this, and I got an email from some guys like, "Hi, I'm uh, Lucius Malfoy from." Uh, audible dot com. Did you get my email about hawking Audible on your show? And I'm like. Dude, I don't want to hawk Audible. Every podcast is is just that one. Do you not want it though? I, it would get us like a ten dollars a month or something. Oh, right? is that all it is? Oh, I you don't should know. Ha- you should see how much it is. Okay, I'll I'll email him back because I'll it is. hawk that shit. <laughs> you guys want to hear it? I'll make it fucking funny. <laughs> I'll change my middle name to Audible. Yeah. Grand Audible Davis. I have a kid on the way. Yep, her name's Audible. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Audible in the Shoe in the morning. <laughs> Just Audible Davis from here on out. Um, yeah, I get tired of... I, it's funny. I was thinking the other day, like, let's say that I actually wanted to go uh, listen to audiobooks, which I don't, but let's say that I do. Um, I would be, at this point, just paralyzed with the choice of whose show do I support by getting my free trial through audible.com, right? Oh, my God. I, I totally want to... Uh to pimp the most weirdest books. <laughs> like, oh, and here's our book of the week that we want to <laughs> promote on, on Read Select. Just like little tidbits <laughs> from specific yeah. books. Yeah, it's it's Crochet and Cunnilingus. There's <laughs> one specific book that we found. Really bizarre. I'm sorry, are you <laughs> licking the <laughs> yarn or uh, <laughs> doing them both the same I'm time? not going to spoil it's it. You got ro- to like buy a it. Koozie? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, so, yeah, anyway. Uh, well, we've already given them quite the advertisement here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now we just Give us our money. Go to audible.com forward slash rage select. And when it says 404 not found, just start emailing the audience. Audible uh, uh, support desk. Like I'm trying to support Raid Select. We shouldn't even. We should. You need to go back in and bleep out their name every time we've said it so far. Because <laughs> we ain't getting paid yet. No. Uh, well, but come on, man. We've done enough testimonials for goddamn Taco Bell and Lone Star and Jim's at this point. That. Uh, oh, did you mean that we're talking about beep yeah. and <laughs> beep and beep beep beep? Yeah. Is that every time we mention it? Th- I, we talk about games all the time. We're not gonna. Oh, half the show's gonna be. We from here need on. money. Uh, Fuck you, pay me. That's what we gotta say to them. We do need money. We do need money. Anyway, uh, well, I tell you what. Before we move into the news, we've got a few more minutes here. We had some. Uh, it's been like a TV apocalypse over the last couple of weeks, man. So much TV. Uh, got. F- I finally got through Daredevil, and so yeah. You want to talk briefly about Daredevil? Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Folks, we're going to talk about Daredevil, and we're not going to get into like super big spoilers, but we are going to talk about a few things that happen. So if you want to go into this thing, we're not going to go into major plot points, but if you want to go in 100% knowing nothing, maybe skip forward just a little bit. I liked a lot of Daredevil. Mm-hmm. I was not a huge fan of the C plot, right? If the A plot is Daredevil and the B plot is Wilson Fisk, the Foggy and Karen Page plot... I got bored while I was watching it. Yeah. And, and even um, Ben Ulrich. Uh, it I was mean, kinda like, eh, I kind of eh. liked it. I, I, I think Foggy is pretty. I, I, I was really digging the actor's take on Foggy. Yeah. I, I like that a lot of his jokes weren't that funny. Right. And it's like he says a bunch of corny stuff. And I, I think maybe even the audience they're hoping would laugh. And I was just like, no. Yeah. Oh, Foggy, you're just a goober. I just am going to look down on you as a human. But I think that kind of is fitting with who Foggy is in the comics and everything else. And with, um, with Karen Page, uh, there was actually... So here's the thing. 
I thought, okay, um, I'm going to be very vague because I don't like to do spoilers right, but there's a thing, there's a major thing that happens with Karen Page towards the end. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, when she dies. Yes, exactly. Shut up, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no <Dude>. spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> now beep that out. Beep that part out. <laughs> um, there's a major thing that happens with Karen Page like almost right before the, it's like the second of the last or, or third from the last. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Okay, uh, I wish that that had happened earlier on because I felt like it gave her character more emotional depth than just like because she's so like just but people have to know the truth right and like i feel like the foggy and karen storyline though was very vital to the show because um of the tone yeah (laughs) overall the show was so heavy yeah it it needed their levity it needed their little pub crawls and they they had to do a lot of the heavy lifting of of showing the Matt Murdock side of his life sure. versus the Daredevil uh, alter ego. Spoilers, man! What are you doing? <laughs> come on! Everyone's gonna know who Matt Murdock. Oh, come oh, I'm on, Grant. sorry. <laughs> well, it's a Fiscus Kingpin. Oh, fuck. oh, come on! I can't stop myself. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, I mean, I thought that the that stuff was incredible. Like all of the Vincent D'Onofrio's portrayal of the Kingpin, I thought was absolutely it was fascinating. It was. I couldn't take my eyes off of it. Like it was just like crazy good. Uh, he is a, a brilliant villain in the Marvel universe, and yeah. like, how many of the mil- villains have you be- really been impressed with in Marvel? Uh, you know, I think a lot of people. I think a lot of people like uh, like get on Loki because he's like the serial. But I, you know, who I really like in the Marvel universe? Who? Uh, actually, I, I'm gonna give you a whole bunch of them because people are always like, "There's no memorable villains." I'm like, "Fuck you." Um, what fucking bridges in Iron Man? The Jeff Iron, Bridges, Iron Monger. Like I liked that as like he's like trying to take over Tony Stark's company, and then he becomes the giant Iron Man at the end. I kind of dug that man. Uh, I mean, I, I liked him as the father figure before he kind of what was his name? Sebastian? No, uh, Johan Sebastian Joust. Yeah, yeah. His That's name is Johan, Johan Sebastian, Sebastian Joust. Joust. It's a Galaga, three-part name. He's yeah, probably like an assassin. Galaga Bridges. That was his name. <laughs> um, I. I don't know. I don't think I fully cared for it at the end. Just overall, in the grander scope of all their villains, yeah. Uh, I yeah. like I like Red Skull quite a bit. I hope they oh, bring Red Skull back really? at some point. Yeah, I, I like Hugo Weaving. I, I mean, thought he just know. looked like Play Doh face. Uh, his well, outfit, his costume was garbage. I was like, why don't you guys just CGI the whole thing if you're gonna put some prosthetic over top of his head? I didn't have a problem with it. I don't know. It just oh. didn't. I mean, you know, whatever. Cool. Um, the only ones that I guess. The only ones I guess I didn't really super care for were were mostly the Thor ones. Malachi, or uh, oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no bueno. Um, but, what was the the Whip one? Whiplash. Oh, Whiplash. See, okay, Whiplash was like that scene with the motor with the with the race. Yeah, that was an incredible scene. As it's very character. it's very memorable. Yes, as a character, he's kind of stupid. In garbage. fact, he he seemed like he was kind of playing things over the top. Right. Mickey Rourke was like, "Oh, comic book movie. I, I, I've done this before with Sin City. Mickey, I know what I need to Mickey do." Mickey Rourke and his like super subtle acting in all the <laughs> movies that he's been yeah. in. <laughs> uh, but anyway, back to Daredevil. I thought that uh, I really liked the fact that they. I mean, whoever did their stunts and stuff was fantastic. Yeah. Fight scenes were incredible. Episode two, that five minute hallway fight yeah. where he's just like falling back and like exhausted and yet like it's so intense. Yep. As someone else I, I I've rewatched it so many times. When he picks up the microwave and throws it at his yeah. head and then comes out and it's all one shot. Yep. It looks like there's spots where they cut it. Yeah. I was reading no, it's it's all one oh, really? legit shot. Because that the, yeah, there were a few places where the way that the camera worked, they could have They had to spin it and you're like, Oh, that's where they made the cut. Right. Nope. Oh, all really? one shot. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can okay. Let's okay. Uh, spoiler for two, but there's there's several points where he goes into a room, and then the daredevil that comes out starts doing a bunch of stunts. Yeah, and yeah. Then that daredevil goes into a room, and then he comes back out, and it's like. Okay, well, I could see a little. There's, there's he's a few a, seams He's here. taking a water break in right, the age exactly, room, actually, and exactly. they're just adding some noises. Uh, I mean, I bet there's like some coordinated stuff even going on there for the timing wise. Yeah. Of like knowing, okay, now we gotta jump out here. Right. Then you're gonna jump out after me. Hit punch, uh, kick, spin, parappa the rappa. But I I liked it because he's the first. He's the first person in a Marvel property. Well, see, I don't watch Agents of Shield, so I don't know. But he's the first person I've seen in a Marvel property that like. Yeah, he has some superpowers, kind of, right? Mm-hmm. But he's not 
like Captain America. He's not a super soldier. Like when you hit him, he gets hurt. You know, and <laughs> yeah, it's, it's well, it, it was interesting. And, and I hope this isn't too much of a spoiler. <laughs> Anyone who's ever read the comics is familiar with it. He has a mentor. Right. And the mentor is uh, played by uh, what's his name? I don't Shit. Have no idea. Scott Glenn. OK. Uh, a stick is his mentor. Yeah. And uh, there's this very funny scene where uh, maybe it's not it's not that funny, I guess, but it's, it's uh, notable. Uh-huh, funny. Yeah. It's funny that he, he talks about. Right before, I guess, he kind of uh, abandons Matt Murdock. Right. He says uh, the next lesson is going to be on training with, with knives. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't ever get to that lesson. And this is why Daredevil gets the shit cut out of him all the fucking time. <laughs> it's like he never learned that lesson. Oh, I, you know what? Here's, uh, here's another thing. Okay, so uh, I do have a pretty big bone to pick with Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Oh, because they show the the they, outfit. They yeah. So like the first two or three days that it was out, the thumbnail on Netflix for Daredevil was basically the actor that plays Matt Murdock, and he's in the suit with the glasses, and he's messed up, and just like a business suit, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's like beat up, and then right before, like the day that I was gonna watch the last episode, I booted it up on my on my PlayStation. <laughs> he saw it, I yeah. open up Netflix, and there they've got him in the. Not only do they have him on the on the thumbnail in the full costume, but on Netflix when you pull it up, it's got like the thumbnail for the series, and then it's got like a big picture for that episode. Such a bizarre choice for them to do that too. I mean, what a weird marketing mistake someone made because the show. It was doing so great. painstakingly builds up to it. It really wants it to be a big reveal. It 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 basically turns to the camera and says, "Hey, audience, this is going to be a special moment for you. Right. That's why we're really dragging this out. And each time you're expecting it, we're going to delay it a little longer. Yep. Yep. Like holy shit, they delayed it. Yep. And, and then and, and then, <laughs> oh, so we can discuss then the outfit a little bit, right? Uh, I mean, the picture's there if you watch it. Yeah, yeah. I think that. I mean, I think the cat's kind of out of the bag. I'm not going to say one. too much, but what did you think? Did you like it? No, I hated it. Yeah, it didn't. I mean, it, I thought that the I thought that the rest of everything th- that it was it was out of place, right? Because everything else in the show was gritty and realistic. There was no uh, shield. Transformer supercar, right? There was no Captain America super soldier suit. There was no armor from the Asgard. Yeah. You know, all that stuff wasn't there. It was a guy on the street punching Russian guys like in the face. And it looked very out of place in comparison to the rest of that. Plus, I didn't like the way that it was two colors. I thought that it... Yeah, it's streetwear, hockey gear, whatever the fuck. I was like, no, I don't like it. Yeah. And the face looked weird. I mean, we can't. We like, could say but he know. doesn't know any better. He's a blind guy. <laughs> right. He doesn't know how dumb he looks in this. And if we're going to no, blame anyone... he senses, right? <laughs> <laughs> he, can, his, he can hear the light bouncing off of like, the mirror and he can see. It's he can fire. hear people go... Uh, like whisper two blocks away, man. That guy's outfit looks stupid. God, he looks like a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what that? What did that gladiator guy make me? Yeah. Which uh, there's a bunch of cool Easter eggs as, as well. Like anyone who's like a Marvel aficionado, yeah. I think you'll end up finding all sorts of nods to other characters, like minor ones, little itty bitty weird people. Yeah. But overall, I really liked it, and you, what it really did was it got me super excited for Luke Cage. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I really want to see that. I hope that they keep the same kind of vibe, because I like the idea that, you know, the shit that's going down over here, like, it's not big enough for fucking Tony Stark or Captain America to deal with. This is some street-level shit, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the other thing that I was really impressed with was the fact that, you know, Daredevil's religious, and they weren't, like, real heavy-handed about it they were just it was in there that's that's his personal thing they weren't trying to like challenge the philosophy right uh in one regard or or they weren't trying to like cram it down anyone else's throat yep either it's just like that's his thing and it was was actually kind of uh and his priest is rad man yeah his priest (laughs) is a cool guy cool dude he's like like, he's played a priest on like four or five other shows right he looks very familiar i'm sure he's been popped up in quite a few things pretty sure he's got typecast he's he's been priest cast well, I tell you what, that is pretty much all the time that we have for that. We're already over time. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into the news. The news. There is one huge story this week, Grant. It's the biggest story of all, and that is that Guitar Hero is coming back. Oh, yeah? So we already had a story that Rock Band is coming back, um, but Rock Band's coming back. The Guitar Hero's going to fucking lap at its heels 
like the shit franchise that it is. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you have any kind of party loyalty to either Rock Band or Guitar Hero. No, but you've made it very clear what yours is. <laughs> I'm Rock Band for life, yo. Um, yeah, well, they ran Guitar Hero into the ground. They they kept putting out versions of it until it wouldn't sell anymore, and they kind of killed the rhythm genre. EA did, I guess, or is it? No, it's a- Activision. 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 God, I always get EA. And I have not. I mean, I I don't even remember what the difference was. Well, Guitar Hero was first, and it was just the guitar, right? And then the people that made that split off, and they became Harmonics, and they created Rock Band, and then Guitar Hero created like Guitar Hero on tour or something that had the drums and the bass and all that stuff. Okay, and then Guitar Hero. Uh, rock band to me was just they were always they had a more solid um more solid just application in general and then they brought in the guitar and some of the other stuff which i liked the theremin the mm-hmm. theremin yeah the rock band theremin <laughs> which is just a theremin uh because nobody knows how to play it uh but so here's some specifics about guitar hero uh live uh, i believe is what it, what it's called now i guess people are eager for this if this is the biggest story well, it's it, well. There's also kind of a slow news week, but uh, <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> I would call it that. Sorry, but um, so it's going to be ninety nine dollars. You're going to get the game and a guitar. Okay, all right. Uh, they've reinvented. You can't, you can't use your old guitar. No, because they have reinvented the guitar. Uh, of course, I could show you the years. The guitar. Oh, you can't really see it. But you see, before you had five buttons on the top, right? Yeah. Now there are two sets of three buttons on the top. There's a top set of three buttons and a bottom set of three buttons so that you'll be moving your fingers in between those three buttons. Um, when you read the article, or I read just it. Why don't they just have us get an actual guitar if they really want us to learn how to play guitar? I uh, see. Okay, here's the a, here's a weird thing about this, right? I think that I don't necessarily think this is a super bad thing. I think it's kind of a dick move that nobody's going to be able to use their old instruments. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, um, I know a lot of people. What 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 difficulty level do you play guitar or rock band on? Medium. Okay, so you're using the four buttons, right? Mm-hmm. Have you ever tried to play it on hard, where you have to start yeah. moving your hand up and down? I only play it for into the fire. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know a shitload of people that once you have to start moving your hand, they're they just they're done. Like they can't do that because they can't move their hand without looking at it. Yeah. So in this aspect, you are going to have to move your fingers up and down, but you're not going to get lost moving. Like I'm making a I'm making a jerk off motion right now. It's folks. very uncomfortable because uh, your hand is on, actually on your penis while you're trying to demonstrate. I'm trying to demonstrate how rock band works. All right, you this is how you pants play. Back on. This is how you play rock band. Why uh, did you actually paint the diagram on your dick? That, before oh, this you, you, how are you going to know what it looked like if I didn't uh, put a, provide a visual aid? Uh, now on the bottom, this is what it's going to look like <laughs> now. <laughs> what are all those injection marks? That, don't worry about those. Don't worry about. What those. are you doing to yourself? I lost the podcast awards. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, so they've got this new guitar. It's got uh, it's got this new button layout on it. Mm. Um, eh, it seems kind of interesting. I don't know. I mean, I learned how to move my hand up and down, so I'm kind of like, well, whatever. Um, Are we gonna play some rock band here? We're gonna probably play some uh, new guitar hero and new rock band when they both come out. That's what I meant. Yeah, ones. guitar hero. Uh, but what that does mean is that they've taken away all the colors uh, from the from the buttons. So now you'll see up here, this is a, how the track looks. It's three notes coming down, and they're either white notes to simulate the top ones or they're black notes to simulate the bottom ones. Ugh. Yeah, racial divide in Guitar Hero. We're going to have some serious problems. Um, Why the white get to be on top, Jeff? Yes, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if Fucked that's what up, it is. Fucked up, Guitar I, I, Hero. I don't even know if that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> but let's see. So number two, they're going to be making it so that you can play it on a tablet or on a phone instead of having to have a whole game console for it. So apparently, I think that what's going to... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, I'm just conjecture here, right? But that would probably mean that the guitar is going to have Bluetooth in it. So you Bluetooth connect to PlayStation or Xbox or... Bluetooth connect to your phone, and you can play it on uh, your phone. Okay, uh, I like that. That's kind of cool. I mean, you can output to TV, play it wherever you want to. You can take your guitar all over town with you like a douchebag, and then just play it at the bank. And I, I will be that yeah. douchebag. I'm going to bring it to parties and serenade people. And they're like, uh, you know what's going to happen is someday somebody's going to see in the wild, right? Some guy who came to a party, and he's just sitting on a couch with a guitar, yeah. a guitar, and an iPad and headphones on, <laughs> playing single. Because it's not a whole, it's not a whole thing. It's just the guitar, right? At least from what I can tell in this uh, this article, it's just Guitar Hero. They've moved it back from the whole thing. That guy's band. very sensitive, though. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he gets me. <laughs> really? Yeah. His name's know. Sebastian. I feel like he might really murder all of us, man. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. He might just go crazy. 
Um, but one of the worst things about this whole announcement is that you know how in the previous games they had like avatars that you could dress up and customize and stuff. Now it's all live video, and I'm gonna play. Uh, I'm gonna play this reveal trailer for you, and you'll get a. a um, it's all live video. Yeah. What it? What they've? What the hell? Uh, okay. All my news just went away. Okay. Nope. Is it? There it is. Where's my news at? It's just in the same browser right here. Okay. Um, so what it is now is they went in and they filmed live action of this band that's trying to make their way from the bottom to the top. Um, and your perspective for the entire game is first person, like you're in this band, and um, but and I I want to break up the band. I already hate all my bandmates. Well, uh, you've even heard them talk. They've all got British accents. Uh, you, I hate them. You hate them already. I uh, just don't like their haircuts and shit. But so the actual what you're gonna see when you're playing the game is this. You're gonna see like an audience. It's like you're looking out onto an audience as you're playing, and they will react. Uh, accordingly to how well you're playing or how poorly you're playing. So if you're playing really bad, they'll they'll be like, you suck, you're terrible, blah, 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 blah. Um, but it just smacks to me of the most horrible decision ever because I like to see my character that I created up on stage with my crazy-ass band that I made, right? Yeah. And the fact that it's all, they've got it all chained up, so this is what you're going to be seeing right here when you play the game. Um, so they have that lady on that guy's shoulders the entire is, time. Is well, she take her top off? I don't think so. I think this is rated E for everyone. Uh, um, that's what happens at these things. Yep. People take their tops off. Also, there's going to be a whole new thing they've got that's like a music channel uh, that you can tap into where the most popular songs, kind of like MTV, right, are like playing, and you could just play whatever they're showing on that station, right? So even if you haven't purchased like DLC songs, I'm so uninterested in this entire game. Yep. The more I learn about it, I'm like, ugh. Yep. Nope. Yep. No thanks. Yep. Nope. Uh, Never mind. Yeah, I could not agree with you more, Grant. The more things they say, the more I'm just like, go fuck yourself. I'll wait for Rock Band to come back with like the real shit, right? Yeah. Um. Ugh. So yeah, I mean, because I'm excited. I like the rhythm genre, right? Mm -hmm. And I like the idea of playing. Rock Band in a... In Does that a, mean Rock Band's coming out with a new one soon? Yes. Okay. That was announced a little while back. That they're making a, a new one as well. Um, but, yeah. Uh, this is terrible. Or Garbage I don't, I don't. I don't like it. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan. Uh, if you're a fan of Guitar Hero, I want you to go into the comments and tell me why you like Guitar Hero when there's obviously a better property... It's like, oh, I'm a big fan of Medal of Honor, Foot Call of Duty. And uh, be sure to direct all of that to Jeff, because if you like it and... You want to tell me? I don't give a shit. Yeah. Grant's just not interested just at all. don't care. Not interested at all. <laughs> uh, I, don't even, I don't even want the discussion. Yeah. yeah apparently, <laughs> I've been trying to engage you for like 10 minutes. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> whatever. Fuck it, man. I don't care. Uh, well, next up, uh, and something that I'm sure is really going to rivet you to your core, Grant. Uh, More Guitar Hero news. <laughs> yes. Uh, rock band. No. Uh, so... Last week, we actually had a reveal teaser story that I had our editor cut out of the podcast because by the time the podcast went up, there was a full trailer for Black Ops 3, the latest Call of Duty game, is coming out. Okay. That's going to be the one for this year. I'm pretty sure that we all were kind of expecting that already, uh, but there's, some, there's been a few details uh, that have come out. It's going to be, um, it's going to be set... In the future, uh, let me let me pull up the um, let me pull up the uh, um, uh, the actual post. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so this is potentially uh, spoilers for people who want to go into Call of Duty without knowing anything about it. Uh, some so people jump ahead, mine some data, uh, and uh, it says Call of Duty Black Ops Three. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Treyarch, yada, yada, yada. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 deploys players into a dark, twisted future where a new breed of Black Ops soldier emerges and the lines are blurred between our own humanity and the technology we created to stay ahead in a world where cutting-edge military robotics does, uh, define warfare. Which, I mean, it sounds like um, Call of Duty has been going further and further future as mm -hmm. time goes on. Black Ops 2 was a story that took place half in the past and half in the future, like some of it during the Cold War and then some of it uh, near future to us. Uh, and I actually like that game quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to Black Ops 3. There's a trailer that I believe, if I'm not mistaken, people who are more familiar with Black Ops than me can tell me, 
um, has audio in it from both Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2. And I don't know if Black Ops 2 actually had any direct story connections to Black Ops 1. So I'm curious to know if they're going to take the... They're going to tie it all together with 3? Resnick. Because Black Ops 1 was like a Cold War. Um, and it had this really great moment where the Ed Harris's character puts on his sunglasses really dramatically and they play like a, like a, a musical stinger. Um, huh. So, yeah, I'm curious. Also, Black Ops 1 had a, a spoiler for Black Ops 1, a fucking four-year-old game at this point, had uh, uh, like a lot of like weird brainwashing kind of Tyler Durden Fight Club stuff going on in it. Okay. So I kind of like the idea of that and the future and robots and what does it mean. I'm like, hey, could be good. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, last year's Advanced Warfare, I actually thought Advanced Warfare was really fun. I mean, Yeah, yeah, that was the uh, Kevin Spacey one, right? Yeah, that uh had uh, Uncanny Valley, Uncanny Spacey uh, right in there. So this one's just going to jump so far in the future that uh, it's going to be Neo fighting a bunch of uh, monsters well, from Matrix? W- <laughs> what I think is really funny is that... Um, so they have three teams that work on the Call of Duty franchise, and last year's team that did Advanced Warfare, which was a near-future hover tank uh, drones and stuff, it's not the same team that is doing this, which is a near-future robotics and a bunch of Ooh. stuff happening. So. I feel like they're all just going, like, I'm almost to the point, I'm almost, I'm this close, Grant, from being like, can I get a World War II Call of Duty game, even though I'm so burned out on World War II yeah, games? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just because they've been doing near future for so long that I'm like, yeah, it's going to be robot tanks and drone swarms and mech armor. They should do barbarian shit. wars. There you go. Game of Thrones, Game of Game of Call of Duty wars. <laughs> there you go, Game of Call of Duty wars. Yep. Um Terrible name, but yeah. uh, hey, trademark Jeff from Rage Select. Uh, <laughs> you called it, buddy. Yeah, it was it just me or did uh, I need to watch it again? I was really drunk when I watched it, but was the season premiere of Game of Thrones a little bit more down tempo, taking care of shit than yeah. I would normally expect? It, it was more set up. Okay, because I watched it and I was like I said, super hammered. I was also very sleepy, and I woke up the next day and I was like. I don't have a desire to watch that episode again. That's weird, because usually I do. Yeah, but. there's only a couple key moments, I think, from it, and otherwise, eh. And too much Jon Snow. Ne- wait till next week. Fucking Jon Snow. Oh, I like Jon Snow. I don't. Uh, next up, as far as announcement stuff goes, uh, there's a trailer online. Destiny's getting a new expansion called House of Wolves, which is has a really cool trailer that goes along with it, where apparently um, there's the, the blue people. They're opening up this Navi. area. Yeah, yeah this Navi. They occupy this area of space that I think you visit in Destiny, but I never really went back and did anything in there. And um, they they're kind of like neutral, so the the some of the bad races in the game are able to hang out there, but they don't attack you. Um, this trailer shows that like they've doubled crossed these people, and now the queen is like, "Fuck you guys! I'm opening this shit up for business. Come on, people! Like I've got a bunch of bounties that are open for you here. So this is coming uh, May 19th on all the platforms." Um, they uh, just put out like a six gig patch or something like that for Destiny. Where'd you ultimately fall on Destiny? Were you kind of like, eh? I thought it was it. What it was was it occupied the same space as a lot of other a lot of other Bungie games like Halo, where I played the single player campaign. I thought it was okay. I played a little bit of multiplayer. I thought it was okay, but I'm not. It's not a game that I'm interested in devoting a huge amount of additional time to. Yeah, which is where they are really. Th- that's, that's their bread and butter, right? That's where they, they want the people who are going to stick around and keep doing raids and missions and leveling up and stuff. Uh, I don't know. When this comes out, you know, May is fucking, fucking bad, all right? There's not a lot coming out in May. So we might end up taking a look at uh, House of Wolves if it's, uh, if it's any good. Uh, but it seems interesting. I highly at least recommend that everybody go watch the trailer because it's a really nifty trailer. Uh, all right. Next up, we've got some two really interesting kind of like video game industry stories. Ooh, so, you know I like those. Yep. The ESA is... Uh, oh, you mean the Entertainment Software Association? Uh, yeah. that's You just oh. read that right off the I screen. I did. You read it right off the screen. I, I know they're, shit. They're the ones who... The, so do you know who they are? They're the no. ones who like set up E3. They're the trade group uh, for the video game industry. So all the big publishers basically pay into that. And then they do um, like... I think E3 is the biggest thing that they do, but they also they're they're kind of like the body that is the full representative of the video game industry because there is no alliance between all the different corporations, right? Okay. Uh, so they announced they put out a report last week that basically has just a bunch of facts in it that I think are really interesting. 
such as 155 million Americans play video games, and consumers spent $22.41 billion on content, hardware, and accessories in 2014, according to the MPD numbers that came it's in. It's just a drop in the defense budget budget. <laughs> We're, oh, is that what we're doing? We're comparing everything to the defense industry? Yeah, it's well, nothing. Unless we go back to Martha Stewart, everything's just a drop in the bucket. The only person, drop in the bucket. The only person who could stand up to the military industrial complex is Ms. Stewart and her, you know... Uh, her and her buddy brain. Oprah. Yeah. Her and Oprah. Oh, my God, what if they allied? Oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Digital, con- digital sales of content such as full games, DLC, subscriptions, mobile apps, and more is increasing. Uh, in 2013, the total digit format sale represented 47% of sales, according to the MPD. In 2014, that went up to 52%. So as much as people don't like playing, buying digital-only things, they're doing it. Now, uh, one of the things to always keep people in mind... People like digital. It's convenient. It is very convenient. But one of the things to keep in mind with these is that the ESA, a lot of times, doesn't differentiate between phone and PlayStation 4, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes they'll put out reports that come into more granular detail about that but i think that a lot of times like when they say 22.41 billion that probably includes like freemium iphone apps and shit yeah yeah Uh, i think angry birds is in there right uh this is one of the ones that i like though 51 percent of households own a dedicated game console with 42 percent playing games more than three hours a week so over half yep gaming man that doesn't wow what again the question is do they count cell phones and ipads I don't think so, but that's his dedicated gaming machine, right? Yeah. So that's not a cell phone or an iPad. Yeah, but do they include Nintendo? Of course they do. Original Nintendo. Original NES? <laughs> yeah, the NES. Yeah, if they did that, there w- w- it wouldn't matter. There'd be like four people. Is that what pushed it up to 51%? That's like, the last four? If you're spanning, like, over the course of 30 years, have you ever owned a gaming console? Someone might have one no. in their closet. I think this is. I think this is current. This is for 2014. All right. Uh, now here's a really interesting rundown: is the top 20 selling video games of 2014. Okay. Number one, Call of Duty: Advanced Warfare. You can't see that motherfucker, right? Number two, Madden NFL 15. You can't fuck with Madden or Call of Duty. I thought you said Mad Men for a second. I was like, really? They made a video game? Mad Men NFL 15. It's the Mad Mad Don Draper in yeah. uniform. John Mad Men is a football man. Uh, <laughs> number three was Destiny. Uh, number wow. four was Grand Theft Auto 5, which is impressive. We consider that it actually came out the year before, right? That is very impressive. Uh, right after GTA 5, though, Minecraft at number five. That's, you know. Number six, Akiba's Trip. <laughs> Akiba's Trip is apparently yeah, up there. Super, super Smash Brothers was number six. <laughs> uh, and I'm not going to go through all these. I mean, like, Watch Dogs was number eight. And it's funny because Watch Dogs was generally panned, right? But What about Assassin's Creed? Uh, let's see. Where they wow. fuck up. Now, see, here's, here's a crazy one. This is why I like looking at these things. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare was number one. Call of Duty Ghosts, the game that came out the year before, was number ten. Fuck. 2013's Call of Duty was number 10 in total sales in 2014. That's the power that Call of Duty has. Uh, let's see. Disney Infinity, Mario Kart, Just Dance, Battlefield, Middle Earth. Um, no Assassin's Creed. No Assassin's Creed. I don't think it's on that list at all. Huh. Far Cry 4 was the one that made it in there. I guess well, Watch Dogs is a Ubisoft property. So um, Now, that's, on, that's just video games in general. Now, here's a nice little wake-up call that I like to put out to all of the PC Master Race people because they've got a separate breakdown that's just top-selling PC games of 2014. Do you know what the top-selling PC game of 2014 was, Grant? Can you read it from there? Top Gear? No. Four? Nope. Top Chef? Four? Nope. What does it say? The Sims 4. The Sims 4. It, my, my eyesight isn't that good, I guess. Yeah, they're, it's pretty small. The Sims 4 universally hated and bitched about by Sims fans because it's like, you took all this stuff out and it's terrible. It's nowhere near. The Sims 4 was number one of, according to this number. Number two is The Sims 3. (laughs) So PC Master Race, number one, it was at least a Call of Duty game on the consoles. On the PC, the, you've got to go down to number three, and that's Diablo 3 that came out way before that, right? You guys like your, your personal computers? Go fuck yourself. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying. Oh that no, okay, we're not. I, never mind. It's I'm saying kidding. that PC people tend to get really. I, I feel like a lot of times PC people get a very inflated sense of their importance to the video game industry, 
And I'm not even saying that they don't have an importance in the video game industry. I'm saying that when you are a person who runs like a studio mm -hmm. and you look at this list, you see the most important game that sold, even though people complained about it bitterly last year, was The Sims 4, even though everybody bought it in spite of that. And I'm actually going to, right now, according to this, uh, I'm going to count up here. This is the top 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, six of the things in the top 20 are Sims 3 expansion packs. What? Yeah. That's, that's not counting Sims 4 and the Sims 3 Starter Edition. After those two, there are six additional things on this list of top 20 that are Sims 3 expansion packs. <laughs> so. Hey, so The Sims does pretty well. Yes. And of the other stuff that's on here, uh, let's see, StarCraft 2, Wings of Liberty, World of Warcraft, StarCraft 2, Heart of the Swarm, uh, Diablo 3 and Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls are all on there. That's like, what, four different Blizzard titles that are on there? Uh, so, yeah, Blizzard and EA are really ruling the roost. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff on here that I think that are really interesting, uh, but I think we're running out of time, so we should keep going. And some of these don't make any sense, like this one. 18 to 35-year-olds are the highest age block at 30%. With, oh, no, no, that one's the one that makes sense. It's this one. Players surveyed are 56% male and 44% female. That's not where, but But the, this next one, I don't understand. With the most frequent female player averaging 43 years of age and the male players averaging 35. Um, I guess that means that if they're taking into account like iPhone games and stuff, that most of the female participants in this particular survey were older women playing Candy Crush, and that's what they were reporting when they were reporting their video game stuff. Huh. And so that probably skewed the numbers. Like, because, you know. If, that's why The Sims is doing so well. Right? Or The Sims, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, Grandma's playing. Because Grandma's playing them. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to. Blah, 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 I'm going to cut a few of these. We're going to go real fast through the next of these because we're, we're already over time. Okay. Uh, so the Electronic Frontier Foundation, you know who they are, the EFF? They oh, do yeah, yeah, yeah. Legal stuff. Uh, Friends of ESA. Uh, no. And they're, the EPA and EEE. And, uh, uh, they're actually currently tussling with the ESA. Uh-oh. Yep. Because there's – and this is a thing. I wish we had more time to talk about this, but <sighs> – the EFF believes that if you, the EFF is trying to get the uh, uh, the courts to give them to essentially create a loophole in the DMCA, right? We all know what that is, Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's just acronym Palooza here. It is. I know that if you turn off the multiplayer servers for a video game and you leave them off for three months, right, that that game is now considered abandoned. And the community is free to essentially hack together their own multiplayer servers so that people can continue to play that game even after the company has turned off multiplayer for it. Mm. The ESA, on the other hand, has come back and said that while this could be used for digital uh, uh, archiving of keeping games, giving games new life, right, of people who still want to play them, sure. that it's also giving pirates carte blanche to basically alter the code in a game to steal it because... At a certain point, you're going to have to illegally you're going to have to illegally alter the code of the game in order to make it point to new multiplayer servers. Mm -hmm. So the ESA's position on this is that you can't police it once you've opened that gate. Is that once you've given people the ability to go in and rewrite the code in ways that they want to, this is just going to give pirates. There's that if you're running a, a, a fan multiplayer server for a game that's had their multiplayer servers turned off. You're not probably not going to be concerned with making sure that the people that are connecting to it bought their copy of the game legitimately and that they're running it properly because in a lot of cases, some of that copyright stuff has probably had to be circumvented but at this point, to do it. But at this point, does it matter? Because <clears throat> obviously the people that created this thing just abandoned it, right? That's an excellent question. Uh, the companies that, that created those properties, mm -hmm. they don't want you to do that. They, they Well, I guess they'd like to just keep making money if they could, but if they turned off their servers, then it's no longer an option. The thing is that the way that, and I'm playing devil's advocate here, the way they see it is that you don't, that they are the ones who set up the servers for that game, and you are not allowed. The, the, okay, the stance they take is this. You, Grant, are not allowed to, to, you are not allowed to modify the code of a game that you've purchased. It's not your game. You don't own it. You're essentially licensing it from them, right? That's the way that software purchases generally tend to be framed, at least the last time that I checked, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't want to give anybody 
uh, permission to essentially go in and start screwing around with the game code because that is such a gray area. You say, well, let's say you're trying to legitimately archive a game for posterity, but this other guy is like, well, if you can alter the code, then I'm just going to alter the code to turn off all the copy protection, steal it from a website, and fucking whatever. If I buy a movie, do I get to take the video footage and kind of cut together my own video? Exactly. Right. Not yes. really. Well, again, that's a gray area, right? <laughs> so right now, the EFF and the ESA are, are tussling over this. Yeah. I personally tend to side with EFF because I feel like I feel like we're with the current digital with the current way that all of uh, the digital gaming works. We are on the horizon. We are seeing we're going to see a day when games are going to be lost. Games that were only available to purchase over Xbox 360. Uh, if they turn those servers off, we should we should always be archiving. Always be archiving. So, ABF, like they say. Then the question is, like, if you have a game that requires authentication mm -hmm. with an outside server, th it, you can archive it all you want to, but if it can't hit that server, that game won't run. Yeah. And so should you be allowed to hack in or redirect to another server that will g always give you a thumbs up so that you're able to play that game? Yes. Okay, but the, the ESA says that if you do that, then you're giving pirates a way to steal that game. What's the problem with pirates? They steal steal the game. I like pirates. I steal stuff. They I steal don't. stuff all the time. Okay, I look, I'm not I like stealing, Jeff. I like pirates as much as the next guy. You got rum, you <laughs> got you got your parrots and shit. But from the game company's perspective, they want to get paid for the games that they made. And that and they see that as opening the door for people to basically just steal their games, circumvent any of the protections they've tried to put in it and go. Again. Hey, don't shut don't shut down your server then, buddy. Yep. And That's on you. Yep. You keep your server up, you're fine. Yep. If you sold a product and you're no longer going to maintain your end of the bargain, right. then you lose control of it. I'm going to have a... Well, see, that's the thing, right? Is if they, if they didn't actually challenge this ruling, then they could lose the rights to some of their properties because they've shown that they're not willing to enforce their copyright. They're not maintaining it. their property. Well, but here's a. Well, but they profited off of. Okay, yeah, uh, we got to move on. Well, no, there's. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of ins and outs. I, I I highly recommend everybody. I mean, you know, I'd like to hear from our audience in the in the comments because it's a tricky issue. I honestly think that if they want to do this instead of the ESA being a bunch of jackholes and the EFF, because it's obvious that the EFF they think that the archival is the most important thing above all else, right? There's an easy solution to this. If the ESA puts together with the money that they're getting from these game companies, right, and they've got all those contacts with the game companies, if they put together something like a, li a game library of Congress where they're like, we, the ESA, are going to curate um, all these games to make sure that nobody is ever going to lose them forever, right? But at the same time, you can't hack it. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, there's ways to do it. Like, if they're worried about. If they're worried about the stuff being illegitimate, they should just step up and say, hey, you know, we've got access to all this stuff. Let's do it ourselves. That way we don't have to get into some shitty street fight with the EFF. We just do it ourselves and be like, no matter what happens, we're going to have this stuff archived in a way that people can get access to it. That'd be cool. Yep. Uh, speaking of which, we're going to go a little bit faster. EA is actually turning off the servers for, speaking of which, uh, Battlefield Heroes, released in 2009. Battlefield play for free and an open beta in 2001 need for speed world and fifa world um which i believe was a spinoff of the world cup kind of free to play thing well we're just gonna have to steal these games now because everyone is so in love with them <laughs> right. there's like five people that want to play any of these games and they're still flipping their shit about piracy sure i don't know that anybody's really i mean i don't know if anybody even on this website cares about any one of those games but. exactly so but that's why i'm like they're just being greedy at that point Plus, I think most of these were free-to-play games. But then that raises another question of, like, okay, it's still a game, right? You don't want to pick and choose and say, like, well, Battlefield Heroes was stupid, so we're not going to archive it. We're just going to let it float out and be lost forever, right? Mm -hmm. You have to say, no, we have to archive everything, even if it is stupid, right? Yeah. You've got to put it somewhere. Like, I don't... Anyway. Uh, all right. Grant, did you need a, a way to waste time? Do you need a way to waste uh, some of your life away? That's why I'm here. Uh, guess what came out this week for all cell phones? <laughs> What's this? Hearthstone. 
Oh my god! You play Hearthstone on your iOS or your Android phone now. <laughs> Can't do it, man. That's you do dangerous. It. You gotta. You, you that gotta, became a time suck for a bit for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blizzard. No, I don't need that. <laughs> So, yeah, I think everybody, uh, I I wish, it's actually probably good that the screen on my phone is currently cracked. Yeah. Because it means that I'm not immediately downloading and playing this right now. Oh, man. I might have to go get this right away. Yep. Uh, Unity, uh, the green programming engine, is adding incompatibility for the new Nintendo 3DS, which I think is really cool because Unity is a fairly cheap and lightweight uh, uh, game development language. Oh, okay. Uh, this is just kind of a side note. And last but not least, I always like to save one really stupid-ass story for the end. <laughs> Let's see it. The Order 1886, universally panned, not many people liked it, is adding in a patch that will let you stop the game and take a screenshot from different angles and apply Instagram filters and shit like that to it. Cool. I don't know who the fuck is going to be using this. Can you take selfies? I don't believe so. You have your picture of your character? I don't I don't believe so. I think this is a terrible idea. I think it's really stupid uh, because I don't think that Hey, we're hip. We're with the the new generation. Is this is that what is that what the new generation is into? Taking That's, that's exactly what they're into. Taking selfies in bad video games. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this is a really dumb idea and I don't think that they should be wasting their time doing it. Like maybe it was easy for them to add it in. So like, so. fuck it, let's just tack that on. I mean, it was probably a bullet point that was on that it didn't ship with that they had to add in later. Maybe they're like Dude, we'll just add this in, yeah. and maybe we'll get some podcast to discuss us for a few seconds on about it. <laughs> we get five cents every time they say the Order 1886. <laughs> I got Robin for lunch today. He said it four times. Uh, well, with that, Grant, we're going to take a quick break. Let's uh, do it. When we come back, we're going to answer your questions. Mail at RageSlight.com is the email address, and uh, we'll see you back here a <gasps> momentarily. Hey, guess what, Grant? Yeah. It's my birthday now. What? Yeah, it turned my birthday while we were recording this podcast. Oh, my God. <laughs> yep. Happy birthday, buddy. Hey, woo. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it this year, but I thought I would mention it because I was just like, ah. So. It's midnight. You, it's yeah. your birthday. Yeah, it's my birthday. Uh, awesome. Yeah, by the time this comes out, my birthday will be like four days past, right? Is that where you're drinking a beer? It's your birthday yeah, beer. Yeah, I'm drinking a beer. I'm going to drink. Uh, sh- uh, Jason left these Shiner Ruby Redbirds in here, which are like grapefruity mm-hmm. kind of shiners. I like them better than the normal one. They're real easy to drink. Yeah. And you just like slug them Suck down. Suck them down like yeah. nothing. Uh, but you know what? Enough about my drinking habits and birthday spankings. Uh, it's time wait, for... Wait, are they, they going to be spankings? Uh, no, I'm, no. I told you before. I'll spank myself later. You don't have to help me at all, oh, right? God. I'm getting my dog to do it for me. He's going <laughs> to... Put put the Guitar Hero penis away, please. <laughs> That's why I brought the my old Guitar Hero controller so you can slap me in the ass with oh, it. No. Uh, the things you're into. Have you have you ever had? You know, okay, so uh, you know when on Netflix they had Friends on there. Yeah, There's that whole episode where Chandler's boss smacks him on the butt. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you ever had a friend or or anybody who felt that like man to man that that slapping your ass was like a a, a, ter- a sign of endearment? I do it to some people. Really? I'll do it to you later if you want. Okay. No. Yeah. Surprise me though not today you got to surprise me yeah, I, I, oh i'll surprise wait you. wait for when my my pants are off so you if nice. you hit them far enough under on their butt you uh-huh. can also slap their balls <laughs> <laughs> little uh pro tip for you i don't want i don't want to get high-fived in the balls grant <laughs> no you will not uh all right well we have questions and we may be taking a few less than usual this week i don't know we'll see how it goes uh mail at ragelight.com is the email address it sucks that it always seems like we go over on the week when I ask people for questions and I get like three times as many questions as yeah, normal. Yeah. Uh, so our first one comes in from Russ. Russ says, hey, Jeff and Grant, a few weeks ago, I put some art up online thinking, hey, this is harmless. Maybe someone will get a laugh out of it and think it's neat for a little while. And oh, how the masses tore it apart, calling it garbage and the dislikes far exceeded the likes. My reaction was, why would anybody put this much effort into something like this? Felt a bit bad. My art was uh, in the center of hate, but felt better when I was told by others that it wasn't horrible. The side I posted to was a hive of negativity uh, that like very specific things. Got me wondering, 
because many of you Rage Select crew are the creative types, be it animation, podcasting, or writing. Have you ever in your life had your creation blasted with a ton of negativity uh, from the majority of people <laughs> looking at it who felt compelled to let their negative feedback be heard? Was it an overreaction? How did you get over it? Always tuning in to listen from Western Australia. A Russ. <laughs> oh, don't you love that question? Jeff? I do love this question. Uh, <laughs> I'll let you go first on this one. <laughs> I, I, I'm more interested to know you because I feel like most people probably know I'm 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 just bad at getting criticism. And I, you know, it, when I was working uh, at Spill, we we're doing the loading bar. Uh, I got introduced to uh, like people are not exactly super genteel when they disagree with you on the internet. They're yeah. not like, hey, buddy, I understand where you're coming from, uh, but I, I disagree. Uh, here are three points that I disagree on, but hey, good job anyway, and uh, whatever. It's, no, you stupid motherfucker! <laughs> like, Yeah, I, I think that I have avoided pretty well um, putting any of my creative content in certain areas where I think it just there's this cultivated uh, troll mentality, I guess. Uh, YouTube Grand versus can, game is on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I've seen negative things, and I think a lot of times it just kind of rolls off my back. I don't really think much of it, mm. or occasionally I, I find it humorous, and I'll I'll want to just kind of engage them, yeah. to kind of needle them back if they they poke at me because I think it's funny, but. It it doesn't get to me. Uh, sometimes it has, but I notice it really gets to you. <laughs> it it does. I've spent a lot of time trying to develop kind of mental tricks to get around it. Um, I think that one of the biggest tricks, one of the ones that I learned a long time ago, was um, if you have a view counter that can show you how many people have looked at your thing, mm -hmm. and you take the number of negative comments and you divide them by you divide the views by your negative comments, you're going to get a percentage the actual percentage of what the number of comments were negative mm -hmm. uh, based on people whose eyes hit your thing, right, approximately. And uh, I find that unless, like, I mean, unless you're just, unless you're doing, like, just racist comics or something, like, generally speaking, um, that number tends to be very low in a percentage-wise. And it, it sucks that we, t that at least I and I know, you know, I've talked to other people about this, that it's easier to take negative criticism a lot of time than it is to take. I I have a harder time taking positive criticism to heart than I do taking one person's negative comment. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that really the only way to get around that is, I mean, I, I've been exposing myself to way what, too many people. You need to cut it out. Uh, to what? No. To what would be Stop considered? Yourself. To what would be considered extremely mild critique on the internet, right? Like what we get as far as quotey fingers trolls go? Yeah, rage select is it's, is easy. It's, it's very easy. It still gets to me, but that's because I'm all super super thin skinned vagina man. Um, that's my superhero name, by the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be the worst comic of all time. Super thin skinned vagina man to the rescue. Your your outfit looks stupid. Oh, why would you say that? <laughs> oh, oh, my vagina hurts. Um. But I think that the the easiest thing to do is just you gotta. Sometimes you just gotta walk away, and I've gotten good a lot of times at giving myself days where I'll let that the uh, the unread messages in my discus notification just pile up until I'm ready to go in and just take a look at it. I mean, I, I guess Russ wasn't necessarily asking about like how do we retaliate, but yeah, I mean sometimes I'll write up something like a, a response and then and I'll then copy it. it. And paste it to uh, save it to, like to Gmail and and sit on it for a bit and be like, do I actually want to say that or oh, is this God. just a, an initial response? And hey, maybe how I misread how they said it yep. and they're like being mean to me, but in like a joking kind of way. And I always figure it's 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 a safer bet for my response to to assume they're joking and kind of joke back, right? Even if I'm gonna be mean, make it a kind of a a joke a playful response than a fuck you. Because then half the time they'll go, well, I, I didn't mean it like that. And then, right. I'm just and then like, you ah, feel bad a second time. Shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also think that it's highly, highly informative uh, from time to time. Um, if you feel like you're getting slammed for stuff that you're doing online, go to YouTube and watch any video. And then scroll down to the comments. Find any video with an animal or a baby in it. I swear to you. The comments are going to be about you are abusing that cat, dog, chipmunk, praying mantis, spider, snake, whatever, or you're a terrible mother because you filmed your kid 
saying doing something stupid or something like that. Yep. Like the internet is a is is a crucible of negativity a lot of the times. And honestly, Rage Select is pretty good in comparison. Yeah. Really I, good, actually. I mean, we don't have that many people who are super contentious with each other. I, I would hope it doesn't ever actually discourage you from continuing to put creative content, put yourself out there with your creative content. Yes. Um, I I enter into a lot of this with, I, I think I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I have like a huge ego, but I do have a lot of confidence in myself, so I don't really get butt hurt by uh, any everyone's comments as much as I guess I could. Um, I don't. Know. I, don't I, I, I like to feel like I take the brunt of the butt hurt for everybody. <laughs> the brunt you're, of the you're butt. You're handling that. The brunt of the butt. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. I'll give Russ an, a real easy way. Something that I always remember. So my favorite Pixar movie is Ratatouille. And it's not necessarily to me the most. Oh, you're that guy. Yeah, it's not ne- to me. It's not necessarily the most entertaining of the Pixar movies, but it's got a message. And there's one line in it that I will always remember. And it's when Anton Ego is talking about the his review right for the for the rat right, mm. um, and he says that the uh, I don't know the exact quote, but he basically says like the most meager, stupid, terrible piece of art. Is has higher value than the comment describing it as such, um, because creation is hard and difficult, and it's really easy to judge something that somebody else has done, and it's a lot harder to do something and put yourself out there. So, Russ, keep it up, man. I mean, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. And if you want to share your shitty art with us, we'd love to see it. <laughs> Grant, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> I was trying to have a heartfelt moment. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm oh, kidding. Captain Thinskin vagina. I'm leaving, much man. Much love to you, Russ. Oh, come on. We were doing Wait, wait, something. wait. I mean, much love to you, Russ, from down under. Oh, God. Is that? No, don't do that. That's, eh? Oh, uh, really? You don't like my Australian accent. Say, that's not a knife. Ooh, it's pretty. <laughs> that's. <laughs> That's not a knife. You have to concentrate. This is a knife. Really? I say shrimp on the barbie. Shrimp, <laughs> shrimp on the bar. <laughs> I'm sweating. Why does it take so much work to do your accent I down there? I don't know. It's like you're, you're concentrating. I've seen you. My concentrate. eyes are crossing. You, you, you don't concentrate this hard when we're playing a video game. <laughs> no, I, I was watching you run from the cops. You were down, li- down right to relaxed. <laughs> um, all right. Our next, que- uh, next question comes in from Jiu-Jitsu, who says... Hello, Ragecasters. Can you think of any examples of games that, for whatever reason, take themselves too seriously? It's like the game forgets it's a game made for entertainment and delves into overtly melodramatic or depressing scenarios for the purpose of being emotionally manipulative. Heavy Rain did that a lot uh, and just ended up making me bored while playing it. As a movie comparison, Foxcatcher did the same thing. I haven't seen Foxcatcher yet. Uh-uh. Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, I picked this question because I felt like you probably had a lot of TV examples, right? Or you could you could that tell me. that take themselves too seriously? Yeah, things that take themselves. I mean, you know, there's a time and a place to be taken seriously, right? But sometimes things get overly serious when they don't need to be. Yeah, I mean, I, I think of like CW shows that always get way too melodramatic about anything. I mean, even the ones I love, like uh, Flash. Uh-huh. Sometimes Flash can just like. Uh, uh, it's like you want to really punch up some dramatic note, but you're also in a red jumpsuit. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, come on. Yeah. Well, that's why. Uh, what? That's why. Uh, um, yeah, they always. But put, it uh, works for their teen audience. So I don't know. In all the Nolan movies, right? Batman is always out. He's never out in the daytime because he would look fucking ridiculous <laughs> yeah. if you saw him driving around in the daytime. Of course, is there a guy in Russia right now that's like, or no, Japan that's just driving around dressed up like Batman on one of the. Pod cycles or oh, something yeah, like that. Oh yeah, that was badass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I could I could think of some examples. I mean, I've talked before, especially on Patreon, about how that as a trope bothers me about just like going dark and heavy. Um, about life is strange. <laughs> <laughs> that one is <laughs> such a pretentious piece of garbage. Oh, God damn, that went over the top <laughs> so quickly. Um, I was actually gonna say uh, it's a, it'd be a re- it's a real unpopular answer, but fuck it, I've had like a beer and a half uh, by now. <laughs> yeah. Um, not just The Last of Us, but any game. I I kind of have a hard time with any game, movie, TV show, song, or poem that that pretends to be able to deal 
in broad strokes with quotey fingers what humanity is really like. Ah, uh, yeah. Because it irritates the fuck out of me. Because in generally speaking, what they're saying humanity is really like is what humanity is really like to make your story more interesting. It's like yeah. you find examples of that's not how humanity is really like. Uh, it's one of the reasons you find that one I, sliver and like everyone is just is always terrible to each other and right. everything is just apocalyptic. That's the that's the the trope of this that always irritates me is that it's just like no everybody's deep down we're all scumbags. Walking right? Dead is a great example on TV where everyone is evil and there's there's never any joy in anything. Right. That's you just, can't show it. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's fucking ridiculous. If we were like that, we wouldn't even be sitting here talking into microphones. Yeah. That's idiotic. But uh, I, I'd say that what works to their benefit is that anytime they might be acting like they're taking themselves too seriously, yeah. they'll chop the fuck out of some zombie and just in the most gory, vicious way that makes you go, oh, yeah, okay, this is what the show's doing. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what. The, I'll, I'll give you another one since we were talking about it earlier. Not all the time, and this isn't a video game, but I felt like sometimes some of Matt Murdock's, like, only I can save this city kind of Batman attitude oh, yeah, yeah. kind of came off a little like, really? I mean, all the cops are corrupt, every single one of them, except for that one You're guy. the only one. You're the only person who's doing anything. Surely the neighborhood would realize it if, like, no cop was stopping any crime ever, or people would move away, or I don't know. These cops I mean, are just corrupt against you, right? Dude. <laughs> You're you, the problem. You dress like a ninja. Like, <laughs> of course, the cops don't like you. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anytime, anytime, anything like uh, the, the Walking Dead got a little self serious. Uh, the Walking Dead video game got a little oh, self serious yeah, yeah. from time to time. Um, I don't know. I feel like, uh, generally speaking, entertainment is getting way better at that than they used to be. But uh, yeah, I mean. Better Call Saul should have been like just should have been like a drama or maybe even a dramedy. Yeah, and it was instead like weirdly super heavy and affecting. Um, and at the same time, had great moments of lighthearted rompedness. Mm-hmm. Is that a word? Rompedness. Rompedness. Absolutely. Sure. Anytime Mike Herman chat was on screen, I was just laughing my ass off. Like, like man, that guy is so ooh, rompedness. He's a he's a he's a card man. He's a character. <laughs> Cut it up. <laughs> Oh boy! I want to see the Mike Ehrman Trout spinoff comedy, where it's just him beating up other uh, other contract killers, <laughs> poking them in the eyes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, this next one is uh, pretty long, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Comes in from Cam. Cam says, "Hello, Masters of the Rage. I want to thank you for all your hard work on the hours of entertainment I enjoy. You're very welcome." No uh, problem. Jeff wanted to compliment you on your pronunciation of. Burnaby, which I'm sure I'm now saying wrong. <laughs> yeah, Burnaby, no, no, Burnaby, called out. Burnaby, uh, and inform you that it is a suburb of Vancouver, British Columbia. I also uh, wanted to let you know that Canada is a big country, and not everyone uh, in Canada can get to EA in Burnaby to play Star Wars. Oh, oh we talked about this last week. I'm sorry, this wasn't the uh, yeah yeah uh, to play Star Wars. Just like people in New York can't go to California to play. They're 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 showing off the new Star Wars game in a closed door thing. At one studio in Canada and one studio in California. So last week I was like, if you live in either one of these places, go see it. Let me know how it was. Dude, there's like five people that live in Canada. <laughs> they can all just go in on in one car and drive there. <laughs> there's five people in all of Canada? I think one so. One for each uh, province of Canada. I think it's like Michael Sarah. <laughs> right. And... Uh, <sighs> Carmen Electra, I don't right. know who all the Canadians Alanis are. Morissette, Alanis right. Morissette, and Dave Shulier, Twain, yeah, right? Okay, and Robin Scherbatsky. Six, uh, we were off. There were six of them. <laughs> Robin Scherbatsky is, is fictional, obviously. I but, don't even uh, know who that is. That's from uh, How I Met Your Mother. The 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 is that a television show? <laughs> give, me, give me your TV I dude. He, I love it. He just broke. You're like, ah, me, no. Give me your TV dude card. I'm tearing it up. <laughs> Uh, now to my question. The release of MLB 15, the show, brought with it a lot of negative. It's the same game. This game sucks. It never changes. I hate the developer type reviews. The problem is it's a great game and has been for a few years. As a baseball fan and someone who plays the sport, it is a very good simula simulation of the sport. Uh, walks the fine line between realism and fun very well and is almost a must-buy for any baseball slash video game fan. What are your thoughts on this kind of situation? Uh, one where a game is so good that there isn't really much room for improvement in the core gameplay and all the features you would expect are there with no glaring holes. 
Is this just a problem found in sports games, or are there examples of games in other genres that suffer the same fate? For the record, I brought MLB 14 and 15, and while their core gameplay is quite similar, it's such a good game that I don't mind paying another $70. Uh, yes, games are $70 in Canada. Bullshit for the minor improvements that are in the game. Thanks again for all the great content. Cam. Um, I feel like this is a thing. I mean, this is just like a, a, it's a, a problem for all art and creation everywhere, right? Like, especially in video games, or when you get, you know, you want if you get the systems that you want in the game down, um, you know, if you just make it, it's a very classic problem where if you just do the exact same thing over and over again every year, like Call of Duty does, like a Call of Duty stories are different, but the gameplay is all very similar, right? Uh, then everybody is like, well, it just feels like it did last year. It's, you're just making the same game over and over again. It's the reason that uh, Guitar Hero went out of business, right? Yeah. I mean, with the sports franchises, though, they, they're able to update each year to match the statistics of all the players and all that and kind of uh, evolve with the season. And it's it's very much geared toward sports fans. Right. And once they've kind of perfected certain elements of it, yeah, what what do you kind of say? And, and they're, they can't, I guess... Uh, appease both masters right not not just both the the sports fan sports game fans yeah and then uh other people who just want to be critics of games in general i i I think it's it's two different groups and and unless a person likes that type of game you can discount their opinion i think it's a uh you know it's funny i never thought about it in the same context before but i seem to remember um hearing this same kind of thing a lot about musicians right is if your new album sounds too much like your old album, well, it's, fuck, man, it just sounds exactly like the last album. What am I even paying for? Yeah. But if you go all experimental and you're like, well, fuck, I, that was my favorite album. I liked it. Why did you change up so much? Yeah, right? yeah. So it's walking that weird line between innovation and uh, or you know, kind of trying something new and staying. Damned if stuff. you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. Kind of thing. I honestly think you probably just have to look at. Like, for video games, I think you probably just have to look at the sales figures, right? And go, yeah. like, are we losing sales? I mean, sports games, I think, in particular, they their um, advancements seem to come with new innovation in the technology. Like, if, if you can up the graphics a little bit more each year. Yeah. If you can uh, introduce some other element into the gameplay. Like, I, I kind of think that it would be neat to play it with Oculus. Playing a sports game where you're actually like kind of standing game, there. Baseball game, I just yeah. be throwing myself on the floor. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! Did you see ah, Silicon sh- Valley? <laughs> no. Uh-uh. Oh, okay, they, they, they're uh, in Silicon Valley. They're these bunch of tech geeks, and uh, they're at some promo event where there's actual professional baseball players, and they can go take a pitch from one of them and like swing a bat, mm. and they're throwing so fast that all these nerds are jumping away like, oh my god, yep. no, I don't want to do it. No one wants to touch it, actually, and they're like, we're here for like another two hours. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, it's a, it's, a pretty classic, it's a pretty classic question, though. Um, yeah. What do you do? Uh, I mean, because it, I feel like there's a lot of, like, if MLB 15, the show, is like the best baseball game that they can make, there's something that says, um, why don't you just sell roster updates, right, for 20 yeah. bucks every year instead of going through the whole development cycle of making a brand new game? Why don't you maintain a smaller staff to basically curate that game or just admi- ad- like administer that game instead of continuing to make another game and another game and another game? Like at a certain point, people are just going to stop buying it, right, because... And maybe they should. Maybe they should. Uh, In fact, I, I think that's a perfect idea. Yeah. With everything being so, like, switching to digital, you can just do a digital update. So, I mean, I think that, like, when you look at Call of Duty, another, you know, if you look at a, a different um, a different genre, like Call of Duty, mm. Call of Duty feels almost exactly the same every year between the running and the shooting and the controls and stuff, right? But the way that they make it work is that they have dramatically different stories every year. So last year was the Kevin Spacey thing, and the year before was... Um, Ghosts, which was stupid, and then Black Ops Two, and so that's the way that they make do with it. But I don't think you can really can't really do that for a sports like a, game. Assassin's Creed. They'll have like the action takes place in like France in like the 1700s, and then the next one will be in in France in like the 1700s. <laughs> but it's like a little bit like in a, the next year, right? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's the, another the, one where it's all the, the same problem. Actually, you know what? Assassin's Creed this year is a perfect example of how they change too much. 
they changed it so much that it felt like a step back. But it was interesting because the way Assassin's Creed development has happened is they kept bolting features on to their core systems. Um, and then this year, with Assassin's, or last year with Assassin's Creed Unity, they kind of scrapped it and started over from the beginning, right? Yeah. But then it felt like there were fewer features because instead of having this core gameplay they kept dropping features into, it was like you could just do... It seemed like you could just do less than you could the year before. Um, and I think that that's always the... You know, from a from a development standpoint, that's always the risk that you take. Is if you try something new and then everybody hates it, well, fuck, we should just stick with what we know. So I don't, honestly don't think there's any clear answer to this question. It's just it's a problem that I feel like people have faced for a long time, right? Interesting question, though. Yeah. Uh, next one comes in from Isabel, I believe. It says, "Hey guys, uh, so I've been listening to you for a long time, ever since Loading Bar. In fact, so first up, thanks for the laughs." I'm applying for a job at a foreign gaming company now, and I think uh, without you guys keeping me in the loop about video games, especially because I don't have the time and money to play so much anymore now that I'm a student, I wouldn't have the confidence. So double thank you. My question is, awesome. if you got to write a video game but it had to be based on any piece of literature, what would you pick and why? Would you go straightforward RPG or something more experimental? Much love, Isabel. Literature. Basically, so just... Well, recent book I read uh-huh. uh, is, oh shit, what is it called now? Um, fuck. Firestarter by Stephen King. No. It by Stephen King. No, I, I could look it up. It's on my phone. The Shining uh, by Stephen what's King. What's the one with the dude on the moon? Moon, the movie. It's called, <laughs> God damn it, you, you talk about one. I'm going to pull it up here. For, <laughs> it, now, now it's going to bug me. Okay. I need to know what it is. I, I would like uh um I want to make some fucking last of or uh, Walking Dead style uh, Shakespeare games where you get to make like super important Shakespeare decisions and then branch that shit out into alternate Shakespearean endings. It'd be crazy. <laughs> Everybody would hate it. I love it. Um, like a mid Midsummer Night's Dream or whatever. Right, but like let you make some crazy decisions, but then keep it all kind of in the in the in the like fucked up Shakespearean uh, aspect. No, I want Titus Andronicus. I want to be able to make people eat their children because that's oh. metal. That's pretty that's, metal right that's there. That's pretty metal, buddy. It is. I can't even pull up the name of the book right now, and that's kind of frustrating me. Basically, it's this book that I read that is um, Robinson Crusoe, but on Mars. So, man, I wish I could remember. Matt Damon's going to be in the movie. They're making a movie about it. Who wrote it? What was the name? What was the author? I can't remember the name. I can't remember anything. I don't Uh, remember it. If you go to IMDb. I'm going to type in Matt Damon on the moon. Matt Damon, IMDb. On the moon. Moon sign? Moon 3D? It's What's his most recent movie? here? The Martian. The Martian. Oh, my God. It's called The Martian. He's not on the moon. He's on Mars. Yeah. I hope he's on Mars. I hope it's not that he's on the moon. Did I say the moon? Yeah. I probably talked with him. Anyway, (laughs) he's on Mars. It's called The Martian. Okay. And it's it's a survival game that's that's on Mars. I just think it's kind of a neat idea. Like, hey, what if you just dropped on another planet? Here's your supplies. Try and survive. I kind of like these like puzzle type games. So like uh, kind of Minecrafty sort of. Uh. Kind of, kind of survival uh, puzzle. There's a lot. To... There's a lot of those games. There's a couple. There's one called uh, Stranded Deep, where you're on a like a desert island and you have to put together a house and shit like that. Like, don't starve. Don't starve. Yeah. 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 I, just, I, I, I just think that would be kind of neat. Actually, I just thought of it. I just thought of of the perfect, my favorite uh, kind of like old established literature author that you could make a ton of really great games based on. Yeah. Um, uh, Dumas, man. County Monte Cristo would make a fucking awesome game. That's like a 30-year revenge story. And it's got so many different gameplay elements between like like sailing on a ship and getting this hidden treasure and then worming your way into society and like duels and deception and all that kind of stuff. You can make yeah. that you can totally make like an Assassin's Creed style game where just your character was assassin. Or the three musketeers. Uh like, you know, you've got three dudes that like going on adventure and they're total pricks and they live in France. Have you ever read The Three Musketeers? Mm-mm. There's a part there where like the D'Artagnan gets himself a, a like a manservant, right? And mm-hmm. all the other musketeers are like, you coddle him too much. 
And he's like, oh, really? And he's like, and then D'Artagnan beat the shit out of him. <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't complain anymore. He was like, oh, yes, sir, whatever you would like, sir. <laughs> like he gang presses this like 14-year-old kid into working for him. And then when the kid talks back to him at one time, the other's like, you got to beat your servants, man, or else they won't pay attention to you. Wow. If you ever read The Three Musketeers. Don't let get out of line. Those guys are tools all right in the book like they're it was written at a different time i'm sure they come off you know i'm, just, I'm reading from a different time period right but the sure. guys are assholes in that book um also uh, the grapes of wrath would probably make for a good uh i'm reading uh the silo series right now it's by oh uh, fuck i don't remember the dude's name uh it starts with an h like hugo harley or some shit like that okay um pretty interesting uh book it's it's about uh it's sort of modern times. The the government. Well, I'm not going to go into too much of that. But okay. there's this uh, these underground silos uh, that people live in, uh, and their society ha- now has to survive in these silos, and it's got like 150 floors okay. in it. And so uh, the floors are kind of sectioned off into uh, different parts of society, and it's kind of like it could be kind it's of like Snow this. Sims kind of things, Snowpiercer kind of idea. Okay, but um, yeah, the the rest of the Earth is scorched, so they can't Dude, go out. Snowpiercer would make a great video game. Yeah, that'd make a pretty awesome video game. I was actually just thinking, like all of the all of the stuff, all of the YA books that come out would probably make for really good video games. I mean, I think Hunger Games could make a perfect video game, right? If you took something like uh, like Minecraft or Don't Starve, where you have to survive, right, and then you added in like a really competent action engine into it you could totally make that work i've always wondered why they didn't ever make any good harry potter games um like they made some but they always they all like they were, sucked like the quidditch and shit yeah, yeah cash grabs i'm like if somebody made like a really good harry potter game i don't know did they make one with legos oh yeah there you go yeah yeah <laughs> all right next question all right next question comes good in. luck with your job yes comes in from uh canon canon says uh, dear Rage Select, Arkham Knight is one of my most anticipated releases of the year and shaping up to be great. One thing is really bothering me, however. It seems Rocksteady is stretching the limits of video game logic to give the Batmobile all this high-powered weaponry and still preserve Batman's no-kill rule. It's like they're violating the most basic principle of the character uh, when they allow car- uh, players to shoot missiles at a moving car, flipping the vehicle and its occupants halfway across the road. What are your feelings on this? Are they giving players awesome new gameplay mechanics while sacrificing important aspects of Batman's moral code? Canon. Howdy, Canon. Howdy, Canon. Uh, you need yeah. to sign stuff or I'll use your first name. So, <laughs> uh, I think that's a, a great point. Do you? Yeah. What's what, what it's up with that? Batman has this... I mean, I always think it's funny that Batman has this code that he doesn't kill people, but he sure will beat the fuck out of someone, and they're going to die early. Oh, yeah. They're going to die early of the pain that he inflicted upon their body. Oh, well, you know, like, how dangerous it is to knock somebody out? Yeah. Like, in real life? And he does it literally. He does it all the time. Yeah. Like, the, the, there was this, on the like, on the Crack podcast, they were envisioning this really terrible scene where, in the Dark Knight, you know, when he knocks out all those cops? Oh, yeah. And then he has to go, like, to the one cop who now has, like, nerve damage and brain damage because he got knocked out the wrong way and they didn't get him revived in time, right? <laughs> and explain to him how, like, oh, the Joker had all these people, but um, <laughs> I think this shit's been going on for so long. I mean, you know, look at, I mean, I don't want to compare Batman directly to the old G.I. Joe cartoon show, but, like, every dude in G.I. Joe had, like, guns and rocket launchers and flamethrowers and nobody died, for like seven seasons, they would just shoot at each other, and all the lasers would go around them, and then they punch each other in the face. They were they were immortals, though, right? GI Joe were all immortals. No, fighting. you're thinking of the Highlander. Oh, That's the Highlander, Highlander. Show. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> they, they, GI Joe. It's very similar. I know. Sounder. You know, Sean Connery was in one of them, and uh, <laughs> it's hard. Sometimes you get confused. But. So I think it's understandable. Um, Sean Connery was in one. Was in Sean one. Connery was in The Rock. Right. The Rock was in GI Joe. Right. Keanu Reeves and Kevin Bacon. Exactly. It's Kevin Bacon. Not. Right. I like Bacon. <laughs> that was how it comes back. All right. <laughs> um, Kevin Bacon. No, I. I, I think that. Uh, I mean, let, let's be honest. Um, even in Daredevil, like. The I mean, Daredevil was better than most about showing the repercussions of him beating other people up. But honestly, like, the amount... Okay, 
He meditates, and that makes him heal faster. I feel like he might kill people. He just doesn't use guns. Well, His thing is that he doesn't like guns, but I, he, he might kill people. I guess. I mean, I don't. I don't like. I'm. I'm truly really trying hard not to phrase it as that douchebag. But let me let me just take a minute to be that douchebag, and then walk it back for another second. Right. All right. Be that douchebag. Okay. He's a man who dresses up like a bat and fights a clown. All right. Is it really the missiles? Flipping over the car. That's where your suspension of disbelief stopped? Quit being a douchebag. Okay, thank you. I will. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I guess... It's your birthday. You're allowed to be. It never it never occurred to me because he's a man who dresses up like a bat and fights, uh, you know, like... He's got a car that drives around by itself and he glides through the air with a cape and he wears bat ears and a bat on his chest. So I'm like, yeah, shoot the car and then flip it over yeah fair enough i mean you know are we going to talk about in uh he's one of the smartest super superheroes so he knows that that mes- missile he shot yeah and based on the trajectory and the speed of the car yeah he was really good at those problems like uh, like how fast is that train going around the the earth right yeah. i i think that i mean it's it, everybody does he knows it. he's not gonna kill people as well everybody does it right yeah uh in a movie the bad guy's car crashes, and they have one inset shot of a guy crawling out of the window before it blows up. Yeah, right. They they do that shit. They if you, if we actually had to have a realistic body count for some of the things that we love in fiction, it would be incredible. I was just thinking about the Flash and how he runs by like if someone's about to be in a, a car explosion, and he'll just grab him and like take him away. Yeah, and I was like, are you supporting their neck? Because once you grab that person, you're going <laughs> to snap their neck going at that just speed. Gwen Stacy's are e- everywhere. Just uh, it's just Stacy's all over the he's place. He's got all these bodies. He like, <laughs> keeps killing these people. He has to drop them off. What am I doing wrong? Dead body <laughs> depository. Or they've just got they've got a heart condition. Yeah. <laughs> like he, he leaves them. He runs off because he doesn't want them to see his face. And then they fucking drop dead on the spot. <laughs> like, uh, uh, <laughs> I couldn't right. handle going at that speed. <laughs> Compression on my heart. Um, I mean, I admit that uh, there was one part of one of the trailers that I thought was kind of bullshit where there were all these tanks that the Arkham Knight had set up and he drives up and he transforms the Batmobile and then he's like, Oracle, scan those tanks. And she's like, yep, they're all unmanned. Go nuts. And so you get to shoot a like, shit load of missiles and blow everything up. Oh. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it doesn't really bother me all that much. Um, well, it should. Well, it should? They're, they're losing the spirit of Batman. Do we even know what the spirit of Batman is? Uh, <laughs> I, it's Didn't Batman carry a gun fear? in one of the old series? Like the black and white series? That had hey, the jumping around. Forget he about straight it. Straight up carried a gun with him. That's not canon. I want the new. I want Dawn this is of, canon. The guy asking us questions. I want Batman or Superman versus Batman: Dawn of Justice to be uh, uh, sponsored by Hostess Fruit Pies, and I want them to stop in the middle and do an ad for Hostess Fruit Pies. <laughs> with, While smoking cigarettes. Yep, <sighs> smoking cigarettes with Twiki the Kid right there with them. I love my camels. Yep. Uh, all right, this next one comes in from Rob. Rob says, Dear Jeff and Grant, it was announced today that the BBC is making a movie about the lawsuits against Rockstar and Grand Theft Auto with Bill Paxton playing Jack Thompson. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I feel this is pointless as the ones that would watch this movie already know the story and how Jack Thompson was a crazed idiot who ends up getting disbarred. Hey, spoiler, man, in the long run. Uh, sincerely, Rob. So huh. do you know, do you remember Jack Thompson? Do you no. Know Jack Thompson? Okay, so back in the 90s, um, like when Mortal Kombat was first coming out, like when video games were first starting to get a little bit more adult and violent. Yeah. Especially around Grand Theft Auto 3. This guy named Jack Thompson, Florida lawyer, white hair, would go on TV and basically, uh, he wanted to outlaw um, video games, v- violence, any violent video games that existed. Okay. Uh, and he crusaded against it. He was the guy you would have on any time a violent video game came out because he would get up there and he would make an ass out of it. Or he's like Tipper Gore, kind right? Of shit. Yeah, right. Eventually, he was disbarred, and uh, because he just took that shit too far. Uh, I honestly think this is couldn't ask for a better. I think this is really great because it means that we're going to have a dramatization of a poor video game company being pursued by a lawyer obsessed with censoring them for their their violence and what they make in video games. And I think that's a and Jack Thompson's fucking he's nuts, man. He's and Bill Paxton's going to play him. Bill Paxton's going to play him. Awesome. I mean, I hope that he has the big shock of white hair because that's what he had. He was like Matlock with white hair and like a Florida tan. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. 
Awesome. That's, like that, that's actually kind of cool. And like, what is it? It's weird that is this a um, like an HBO it, kind B, of? No, it's BBC. BBC. Um, I wonder who they're gonna like. Is Rockstar gonna be like the poor? Uh, like, we're just trying to make Grand Theft the Auto. The people versus Larry Flynn kind of thing. Right, exactly. They're the underdog. Like, that's weird. I don't know how... I don't even know how that would... Do, that's... Oh, no. Okay. Now I got it. I got it. I understand why they're making it now, because it's going to sh- stir a shitstorm of epic proportions on the internet. Um, but I think Jack Thompson's a great character. Um, I actually knew people who've met him. I think Kevin might have met him one time. Huh. Uh, okay, this next one comes in from Nobody. Jeremy, who says, sorry, Jeremy, I didn't see you uh, sign this. Uh, I watched the trailers for Spectre and Mission Impossible Rogue Nation just the other day. And they both appear to have major potential. That being said, aside from the Avengers and Star Wars, of course, what movies are you most looking forward to this year? My choices would probably be Jurassic World and In the Heart of the Sea, the new Ron Howard film. Thank you, as always, Jeremy. Age I, of Ultron. I, they already said outside of that. Uh, outside said of Star Avengers. Wars. Said outside of, uh, of, aside from the Avengers and Star Wars. Of Fuck! Course. Yeah. That was my answer, dude. Okay, well, I brought this up specifically for you. I don't know anything about movies that are coming out. I know TV. I don't know movies. All right, well, then what uh, are the TV that you're most looking forward to? I don't, Fargo what's even, Season 2? What's uh, we, True Detective Season 2? Let's see. We keep doing this. Like, let's see. Uh, Wikipedia's movies. got a big thing. I mean, we, did, we covered this on uh, a Patreon video, but I don't think we did it. Mainstream. I don't know if I've actually looked at a list. Let's see. Uh, let's see. New upcoming movies, 2015. Uh, May. Let's see. All right. Here's, what do we got? What do we got? Okay. Here we go. Um, Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 is number one on my list. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty excited about uh, that. Let's see. I'm trying to think. I don't even know what any of these are. Um, this is a bad list. Hold on. No. Go, go to the Wikipedia page one. Wikipedia page, 2015 in film. Yeah. This one? Beep, 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 and scroll beep. down. Okay. To February, March, we're, April. We are in April, so we get to May, okay. or June. Uh, Child Wait, 44, Monkey Kingdom, Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Okay. <laughs> Move Avengers, your beer to this side. Avengers Age of Ultron. There oh, you want go. me to make it a. Uh, no, Mad Max. Holy shit. Yeah, Mad Have Max. you seen the latest trailer for that? I did. Oh, God. I did. It looked, uh, it looked pretty hot. It looks okay. fucking amazing. Um, let's see. The cinematography, at least. Uh, Tomorrow World, I'm actually really excited about. Tomorrowland? Tomorrowland. I think Tomorrow World was, was that the one with the weird, where they filmed it, Gorilla Underground in, in the Disney parks? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a weird fucking movie. Um, Entourage the movie? What? <laughs> Not excited for Entourage the movie. Jurassic what do you think about World? Jurassic World? I'm kind of excited because I'm like, oh, dinosaurs, whatever. I've talked before about this. Dinosaurs don't do it for me the way they do it for other people. Um, and I No, Guitar Hero does, apparently. That's Guitar Heroes, totally. Now, I wanna <laughs> st- I'm much more interested in Mad Max than I am in Jurassic World. Yeah. I mean, I like Chris Pratt as much, much as the next guy, but I'm like, these dinosaurs are going to go do a thing. Terminator, right? Genesis, I'm totally not into that. I am. I'm interested. I, I love the idea. Plus, it's got my girl, Daenerys, from... Uh, um, Game of Thrones in it. Oh, yeah. As uh, Linda Hamilton. Ant Man. That new Ant Man trailer was pretty hot. I thought, it, okay, there's a scene at the end with the, the Thomas the Train. Oh, yeah. That was totally Edgar Wright. That had him, his signature all over it. Oh, yeah. As far as the, the humor of it, I was like, that just seems like something he would do. Uh, see, we're into July now. I don't Southpaw. Uh, um, what is that? I, I really like what I've seen. That's the Antoine Jake Gyllenhaal Fuqua. boxing movie. Okay. And it's written by Kurt Sutter, Sons of Anarchy. I feel like I'm just reading out the... the, the oh, uh, I am not excited for Pixels with Adam Sandler. No, no. <laughs> and uh, Fantastic Four, I... I have you I'm skeptical. Wait, who's Mission Impossible Rogue Nation? Um, I haven't seen the trailer for that. I haven't watched the trailer for Spectre either. Um, I've seen teasers for them. Okay. I have not seen the trailer. So if they're out, they must just come out. I'll know. watch uh, Guy Ritchie makes the man from Uncle. We're into August now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that new Hitman uh, movie. Oh, I, like I have seen the man from Uncle uh, trailer. Trailer is it good? That does look good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sinister 2, obviously. <laughs> our, 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 our boy. Yep. He wrote it. Wait, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon 2? 
Um, okay. That's quite a stretch between sequels. Okay. And that's August. I don't know if we want to go into September. Does that? What, uh, I, I think that, that covers it enough for uh, now. We got to save something for when we get this question. Uh, yeah. Demolition Man 2. What? I'm no. kidding. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, dude. It would be terrible. They'd fuck it all up. They would ruin what they had created as a masterpiece. Okay. Uh, Sex comes in from Max. Max says, hello, Lords of Rage Select. Do you think gamers are too harsh, fair, or too lenient on game developers and producers? Are we too quick to exile those who anger us to damnation (laughs) when the game isn't exactly as we want it? Or do we allow developers to get away with more than we should? Uh, Ubisoft this year has produced a few disappointing games, but just as uh, many really good games, what is the appropriate reaction to judge them and others? Thanks. Mm. Praise be to the dong, Max. I think people are just harsher critics in general because we are now information junkies on the process and not just the end result. Mm -hmm. So in film and TV and music, everything, people love voicing their opinion and they now have this platform to do it and so all of us are much harsher than we used to be and uh i i don't think it's necessarily like all bad though i mean you also get to kind of hold people to task take people to task for missteps and mistakes and what they've done um i i don't uh i think that it's good that people express their opinion right um i think that there are two things that bother me about that, um, or that, that there are two times where people expressing their opinions uh, and their opinions having a, re- a, a, a negative reaction. A reaction bothers me. One is when things are announced, um, when tease, uh, 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 previews of things are announced, and people see things in production and complain about a thing that gets changed before it comes out. I don't like the idea of just generally what the the people's knee jerk reaction informing the development of like a game. watching it or like watching a trailer and then being like, oh, I can't believe they did this. And like you don't know yet what they're gonna do. Well, it's, trailers lie. It's not necessarily that so much as it is. Okay, yeah, it is kind of that. I I really prefer to wait until a thing actually exists. Right. Mm. Like as far as I'm concerned, most of the emotions that I have before. Um, a product exists and is in my hands are kind of useless. Um, like I can be excited about a trailer, right? But I would never want to see a thing while a game was in development and then demand that it was changed before that game came out. Um, I guess sometimes that has its place, like when people express their displeasure at the Xbox One and the way that the DRM was on that, and Microsoft actually took it out before they launched the. Didn't they do that console? with one of the Assassin's Creed that it was like all dudes or something, and they're like, "Oh, we had that was added a female." They character. didn't add. They didn't add one because oh, they didn't? Um, it was. But see, that's one of those things where it's like, I honestly feel that um, wait till the game comes out, uh, evaluate it, don't buy it, right? Boom, done. You've made your opinion well known, and then don't buy it, and then tell them what it is but asking them in the middle of their development cycle to add something in because you want it is weird to me it's it's uh unearned entitlement right and the other one is when a game comes out um and they're they're, for all these there are both good and bad examples right um Mm. but if a game comes out and it has a problem or if a game comes out it does something that you don't like Feeling like you have the right to demand that the developer fix that, and then that they have to do it—not a not a bug, right, or like a broken feature, but like, oh well, I'm dissatisfied with this mechanic. I don't know. It's it's hard for me to. Yeah, it, it it's one of, like we often get these questions, and I think that we kind of draw a line and say and take a yes or a no to some of them. But right, th- it, it's it's a complex issue it is. that it's like in in some cases. Yes, people go too far. In other cases, I I think they're justified in their complaints. I think. And, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Oh, all I was gonna say is just generally speaking, I think that I I don't like the idea of people. If a person has a vision for the, how they want to make a movie, a TV show, a video game, a book, or whatever, mm. um, I don't I don't like the idea of their creative process being directly influenced by. People who saw a screenshot and they think that it looks like garbage. So we've got to go back and retool. You see it all the time in like superhero things. It's like 
That's not how I envisioned it. Right. I mean, I was just complaining earlier about um, some aspects of Daredevil. Right. That maybe. Uh, I mean, it's 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 their vision. I I didn't like it personally, but they were more than welcome to make those calls. And, yeah. And uh, you know, I I think they took a risk, and you should at least applaud them for that. Maybe maybe what I'm trying to say is we go back to Russ's question, right? Of saying that um, I value the outrage of people less than less the creative. than the creative forces that created a thing. Um, Nice way to bring it back. Yeah. Call back. I think they're important. I mean, I think that it's still important. We we did a whole Grand Theft Five, Auto 5 Patreon where we're talking about the importance of cultural critiquing and analysis and things like that. Yeah. So I don't want to by any stretch of the imagination and say that it's unimportant. I think that... But to the point where you silence someone from creating. Right. Eh. I don't know. It's very, very delicate. We're kind of walking around on eggshells here with this have uh, constructive criticism don't right. just have criticism yes. i think that's what people don't do much uh and you know what let's see i'm gonna give one more question and then we're gonna be done all right let's, let's do it this one uh this is actually pretty easy uh, uh well it's a simple question with a slightly complicated answer uh hey guys um hatrix 43 here uh, I'll get right to it. Are you guys going to E3 this year? Or will we be doing the community live stream or the press conferences like last year? Keep all the awesome content coming, especially Patreon playthroughs. Rage on Hatrix. Um, what is the answer? The answer is I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that uh, was an easy one. All right, good night, folks. <laughs> no, uh, so here's the, here's the situation is um, uh, I did... I have... We, we did get a media badge this year. I have a media badge. I can go to E3. Uh, the main question is just whether or not we can afford to go um, and whether or not it would be helpful to go. So it's the sort of thing that we've got some some we got some plans coming up here in the future. Uh, and so we'll t- address it a little bit more at that time. So the question I- or the, the answer is, I don't know just yet. Um, I can go. Uh, now, whether or not we're going to do it, I haven't entirely gotten to that point yet. So. Because it is a it's a t- it's a, a resource investment, right? Like, yeah. Um, and in some cases, it's really beneficial because you get a lot of hands-on time with developers, and you get to see stuff before it comes out. You get to tell all of our uh, loyal listeners like exactly what I think about stuff that hasn't come out yet. It could be a fun little adventure for you as well. That's yeah, three or four days. But if it's stressful in LA, uh, it's no good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I E E three is the last thing left on this earth, Grant. That is, I always, I've gone to Disney World a couple times with this guy who's my teacher, uh, who goes there every year because he's a huge Disney fanatic. Yeah, and he's older than I am, right? Um, he's in his fifties, but when he steps, he's like the life commercial when he steps into Disney World. It's like he becomes a kid again, right? He run around all day, doesn't have to E3 sit down. E three is that for you? E three is that for me? From the moment that I put my foot into the convention center, <clears throat> it's like snap your fingers. It's eight hours later. I haven't eaten anything. I haven't drank any, uh, drunk anything. I haven't gone to the bathroom. All I've done is wander around and do stuff the entire day. And then I get out and just like shove as much cal- many calories into my face as humanly possible and then just pass out for 12 hours, wake up and do it again the next well, it day. Well, it sounds kind of fun. Like maybe you should go if that's the case. It's kind of a vacation for me. It's just, it's also it's kind of resource intensive. And it, it's, it's just stressful. go and, uh, you know, have the site go dark for a, a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> you, this is just, this is your clever plan, isn't it? Ha 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 ha. Hey, speaking of you um, have a bad villain laugh, I mean, but you got a better villain laugh than that. <laughs> oh, that's a bad. I'm laugh. a villain. <laughs> we're we're going to work on that. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, uh, but speaking of upcoming events, should we announce the uh, the thing? Then? Not just yet. Uh, we'll do that in a different a different uh, sphere. It's been posted elsewhere already. Yes, but not publicly yet. Okay. Well, I'll have to check on that. <laughs> anyway, <All right. laughs> mail at racelight.com is the email address. If you would like to send in your questions, send them in. Send them in every week. Uh, we need questions to answer for this side. Um, we can't just talk about the news and Martha Stewart all where, the time. Where so. can I give you my Patreon money? Patreon.com forward oh, slash okay. racelight. Yeah. Do you, need, do you need to contribute, Grant? Yeah. Is it just like a, is this a money laundering operation where you contribute and then Wink. I write you a check? Like, damn it, I don't want to be a money launderer. <laughs> but, all right, well, I'm going to go finish the rest of my beer and uh, get ready for my birthday proper. So we'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>